Oh gosh, that's a, that's a big one there. Oh, another smallie. Good smallie. Oh gosh, there's another one. There's one. There's another one. Oh my gosh. Well, it's not super cold today, but it's definitely not warm either. I'm on a body of water that I have not been to in well over a year. And really, I just wanna show you how I use crankbaits, especially during the fall time, to locate bass. I'm really excited to get out there. Hopefully we can catch them and uh, show you a thing or two about fishing crankbaits. So stay tuned, it's gonna be a good one. So I'm actually gonna be starting off uh, throwing three different crankbaits. They're all gonna be kind of different running depths and even different colors. But I wasn't always able to have three different rods with three crankbaits, so I totally get it. You know, if I were to choose one crankbait to fish out here today, it would probably be this DT6 right here. What I know about this body of water is these fish feed a lot on, on crawfish in general. I'm also going to be tying on one of my favorite cold water crankbaits, which is a Berkeley Fritz side. Uh, this is a smaller crankbait right here. This is the junior size. The third crankbait I'm gonna rig up is a, a little bit deeper diver. Um, it's also in a crawl pattern. This is a storm rock crawler. So those are the three baits I'm gonna have rigged up and we're just gonna go down the bank. There's a creek down the ways here. I'm gonna idle in there, see if I can't see some bait on the surface. And if I do, then I'll probably spend a little bit of time on there. You know, we're actually coming up on a little bit of a transition type area here. We have some bluff bank, some steep bank right here. And then over here, there's a lot more flatter bank. And it doesn't matter what season you are fishing, bass are gonna relate to those transitions. So it's just an area that you wanna make a couple extra casts in and uh, see if there isn't a fish holding around there. I'm a big believer that if you don't catch fish in, in 15 or 20 minutes after stopping that, just keep moving. A lot of times it's just about being in that right area. That's a good one there. Oh, he just popped off. That damn it. <gasps> that just kind of goes to show you what I'm talking about, though. I, I feel like moving around and getting in that right area is what it's all about. You know, I, I made a move here, literally fished for five minutes, hook into that fish. So unfortunately, I didn't get him, but that was a that was a good fish there. He was hooked on kind of the side or the top of the head, so he must have just swatted at it. Uh, but you know, losing fish, that's that's fishing. Well. I fished that area pretty hard for about 20 minutes or so. Um, didn't get another bite there. So it may be telling me something, you know, it's a clue, but we're gonna keep on moving and uh, try to locate us a little stretch or a little school of them. So let's keep at it. I mean, you can be lucky and catch a bass, but it takes straight skill to catch a rock. a little bit of a move up towards the river portion of this reservoir. This is something that I like to do a lot in the fall. The water's a little bit more off color up here, which I actually kind of like. So let's keep after it. There's one. Gosh, oh my gosh. I may have just found the mother load. Oh, <laughs> look at that, baby. We may have just found something special. Look at that. Look at that. That is a beautiful fish right there. There was two fish that were equally this big trying to take that lure out of that fish's mouth. So, man, I'm really hoping that I can get into them right now. I'm looking over at my Mega Live and, and it looks like there's literally like 10 or 15 of them. So look at that. 
Golly, that is so sweet. Oh, that's great. They're kind of sitting a little bit deeper. I'm gonna toss this. Oh gosh, there's another one. Oh, that's a large mouth there. Nice large mouth. Come on, baby. Woo yeah, look at that. Isn't that beautiful? Crankbait, actually. <laughs> Just to go to show you exactly how much of a cluster it is right now. I went to throw that fret side that I was just talking about up there and literally casted it on shoreline. And I didn't want to go up there and disturb that school. And so I picked up that uh, DT6, another one of my favorite cold water baits, threw it up there and bam, that's a nice largey there. Look at that. Just for reference, guys, this lake over here, I mean, you're usually talking about 10 pounds what wins tournaments, eight pounds. So. You know, two, those are, these are two, two and a half pound fish. And uh, th they're good ones for this little body of water. <laughs> this is, I love it. All about being in that right area. This video is brought to you by sportsmansoutfitters.com. The Black Friday sales have begun and you can save a lot of money right now on both hunting and fishing gear. So if you guys would like to help support the Bass Fishing HQ channel, click those links down below in the description. There's another one. Oh my gosh. That's a good one there. Stay on, baby. That feels like a good one. <laughs> this is too much fun. Oh my gosh. I had to get a little bit. Oh, another smallie. Good smallie. Good smallie. Come here, baby. Golly, that's a good one, man. He's got it pretty good. I'm gonna try to flip him. Oh gosh, he lost the hook. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Look at that. That's the third big one in a row. Well, I'm telling you guys, these are big fish for this body of water. Gosh, that was awesome. Look at that. Small jaw. <laughs> that, that was about the size of them ones that were chasing after that first one I caught. Look at that. Look at that. That's beautiful. Beauty. Something I do a lot with a crankbait, as you can see right now, is I really like to pump this bait. That's, that largemouth I caught earlier, I actually ripped that bait off of something and he got it. And I think that that sometimes is really important. And I think pumping that bait, really slowing it and speeding it up can also help you to catch a lot more bass. Golly, this is too much fun. There's one. Oh gosh. Fourth one. No, no. A large mouth or a small mouth. Golly. Small, smally. Another, another solid smally. Got one hook in him. Probably gonna lose this one. Nope. <laughs> oh my gosh. Look at that, baby. Look at that. Oh, this is the best. Look at that. Just a beautiful fish. Fall time cranking, guys. That's what it is all about. Now, what we got here is kind of a, there's one. Yep. 
that's a large, or is that a smallie? What is that? It's another smallmouth. <laughs> we catching them now, boys. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Crushing that DT6. Guys, I'm telling you what. If you do not have some DT6s on you this time of the year, actually about any time of the year, but especially in cold water, you're going to want to go ahead and click that link down below, pick you up some DT6s. Another solid little small jaw right there. I'm telling you, the, the one, I still haven't caught the one small mouth that I saw with that first one I caught because it was a good pound bigger. It was probably well in the three and a half pound range. So I'm going to keep on throwing. But that's, uh, man, that's, how many fish is that? Is that, is that five? Yeah, I think that's five. That just goes to show you exactly what fishing is all about, though. I mean, you just get into the right area just like that. Nope, that's not a bass. That is a nice clump full of leaves. Sweet. Awesome. If you look right above here, there's actually a small creek that feeds right into this lake. And this is a perfect little feeding zone for bass because a lot of times that small creek is going to bring insects, fresh water, which is going to bring a lot of bait fish. And then those bait fish are in turn going to attract the bass. So it's just a perfect little prime feeding zone for them. Oh gosh, that's a big one there. I thought that was a daggum rock. That's a big one. Come on, baby. Oh. He was out there a little bit deeper. Yep, that's, that's a good one. He's got the hooks good too. Oh my gosh. That was a terrible boat flip. Look at that. Look at that. Look at that! Is that not a ball of fun? Whew. I love this time of the year. I know it can be cold, but it's just, it's just so much fun. I have not seen another, there was not another boat in the parking lot. Look at that. That's a beautiful, gorgeous, smallie. I'm surprised I haven't caught more largemouth. There's got to be more about here. I may have broken up that school a little bit. A lot of times what happens is, you know, you'll have fish that are grouped up fairly tight. You cast in there, you cast in there, and you're catching them. You bring that school off. All of a sudden, they go from being in a tight ball where they're very competitive to now they're more spread out. And so I might be able to pick one off, you know, here and there, but sometimes leaving this area and coming back, what happens is those fish will actually kind of come back in and kind of collect in that same area that they once were and get kind of in that close ball again where then you can really see i just had one hit it right there where then you can really catch them again i can't tell you how often fishing goes exactly like that i mean we've been fishing for hours literally with nothing you get into a small little area and it's bam 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 there's been so many tournaments that i fished that you know, it looks like you're the hero because you come in with a big bag, but that's how it happens. It happens just like that. You just, you just catch them real quick. All right, we are sneaking back up on that little area where that school of fish was. There's one. Oh gosh. Doesn't feel big. It's getting a little bigger. Oh! <laughs> Came back to that spot. He's not as big as the other ones, but. There we go, baby. Gosh. It is so much fun fun are you guys having fun look at that another solid 
chunker. Let's hold them real close to the camera. <laughs> All right, here we go. Let's get us another. Ooh, may have been a little shallow on that one. I wonder if I could throw something slow like a Ned rig through there. There's, oh, do I still got him? Yeah, I still got him. Golly. Not a big one. I think I caught all them bigger ones first go around. Hey, it's another fish. Like I said, though, sometimes you just got to let them regroup a little bit. It's a lot of fun. There's one. Got one on a Ned. See if any got any followers. That's a decent fish too. There we go. Clean up. Catch them on that crankbait. Sometimes throw something a little bit different, old Nedley, and you can be deadly. Well guys, the DT6, it's one of my top baits that I always fish in November. And I actually did a full video on all the lures that I like to fish in November. And I'm gonna leave a link for it right here. I include this bait as well as four others. If you guys enjoyed this video, don't forget to comment below, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see y'all in the next video.